Hi guys, welcome to another Flight Deck 2 Sim tutorial. Today I am going to show the rejected takeoff maneuver as taught during the type rating. Now, just before we do the maneuver, just like to give you some background knowledge and information. So we're currently in uh, Heraklion on the island of Crete in Greece. It's a bit of a dull day. It's raining, a little bit cloudy, and we're all ready to go. Uh, just ready to take off now. All the checks have been completed. Now, the objective of the RTO manoeuvre is to quickly configure the aircraft to produce the maximum stopping force needed. And we have two different regimes based on speed. We have the low speed RTO and the high speed RTO, and that is divided by 80 knots. Now, prior to 80 knots, we could pretty much reject the takeoff at anything. Uh, the main reasons would be a fire, a fire warning, engine failure, uh, a predictive wind shear warning from the weather radar system, the airplane was unsafe or unable to fly, anything that caused the master caution to uh, enunciate any system failures, tyre failures, the take of configuration warning horn, or even something as simple as uh, the side window opening here if we didn't latch it properly. Now, below 80 knots, we can pretty much reject for any of those reasons. Now, above 80 knots, we enter the high speed RTO regime, and we can only pretty much stop for four reasons. Uh, and this is based on my company's practices, it might be different elsewhere. Uh, and those four reasons are fire, or a fire warning, an engine failure, a predictive wind shear warning from the weather radar system, or again, if the airplane is unsafe or unable to fly. Now the captain, and the captain alone has the sole responsibility uh, to reject the takeoff and he makes the call and that's why he always has his hand on the thrust lever even if the first officer is, uh, first officer is conducting the takeoff so he can immediately uh, stop the aircraft. Now the maneuver itself, uh, how to conduct that is briefed every single time on the first flight of the day and the captain initiates that briefing and I'll give you, I'll give you that pretty much as it's told by uh, in, in our company. Now the captain will state in this emergency briefing that above 80 knots he'll only reject the takeoff for those four reasons the fire fire warning engine failure predictive windshield warning or if the airplane is unsafe or unable to fly and then he talks about what he's going to do uh, if he wants to stop the aircraft and he says if i call stop i will simultaneously close the thrust levers and disengage the auto throttle uh, uh, then apply max manual braking or verify the operation of the RTO order brakes. We'll then manually raise the speed brake lever and then select a reverse thrust and bring the aircraft to a stop. And after he's stopped, he'll then set the parking brake. Now, they're the actions you can see listed on the left-hand side. Now, a couple of things to bring to your attention about the aircraft systems. Now, we have the RTO auto brake front uh, function on the aircraft. That will only work... Uh, if you're above 90 knots or so. So if you reject below 90 knots, you will have to apply max manual braking. Uh, the second thing is the speed brake. We don't actually arm it for takeoff. If you did that, you'd get the takeoff config warning, but it will automatically deploy uh, so long as the tire speed uh, is more than 60 knots. Uh, the thrust levers are idle and reverse thrust has been selected. But the whole idea is that we do it manually before the aircraft will, will uh, set those things automatically for us. Okay. Uh, now, all we've got left to do is the first officer's part of the initial briefing, and he says if you call stop, you'll note the speed on which the brakes would be applied, uh, call speed brake up, speed brake not up, call the thrust reverse as normal or any abnormal indications, verify uh, all the actions have been completed, and he'll call out any emissions if the captain's forgotten them. He'll then call 100 knots, 80 knots, 60 knots, uh, the runway distance remaining, order brake disarm when that light flashes, and then as soon as the parking brake's been set, He'll select flat 40 in the event of a, uh, an evacuation, and then he will contact ATC informing them of the rejected takeoff. And that, guys, is pretty much the manoeuvre. Let's go give it a go. Okay, so I've now programmed in the failure. We have been cleared to take off, so we can start the timer. Set the thrust levers up to about 40%. Wait for the engines to stabilise, which they have. Push toga, set takeoff thrust. And we have takeoff thrust set indications normal. So just maintaining the centre line with rudder. Keep going down. So there's an engine failure, 80 knots, so stop. That's close the thrust levers, disconnect the order throttle, apply max manual braking. Speed brake up, reverse thrust to the maximum, bring the aircraft to a stop. 
And the aircraft now stops at the parking brake, cancel reverse, and straight away the first officer will select flat 40 and contact ATC. And he'd say something uh, in this situation, uh, pan, 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 flight deck to sim, we've had an engine failure, rejected takeoff, standby. Now, as soon as he'd finished with that, the captain would say state malfunction, and he'd then have a look at, in this case, the engine parameters. The first officer would so move back to his seat, having to do all the duties for everyone here. And he'd say, engine number one, we have no N1 rotation, engine failure flag with high EGT, no fuel flow, no N2 rotation. Check all the secondary parameters and verify that the uh, engine fire, uh, well, in this case, wasn't on fire. And in this situation, we have uh, engine number one, severe damage, and then he would complete the memory items for the engine severe damage. But that will be for another tutorial on a different day. So that, guys, that's it. That's the rejected takeoff maneuver. I did it as expeditiously and realistically as possible. It's very difficult using FSX, but I hope you found that interesting and learned something new. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave that in the comments section. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Fly safe, and I'll see you again very soon.